at the end of the day, who says this more? I'm glad I'm not a nurse, or I'm glad I'm not a respiratory therapist. What is up you guys? My name is Austin Marks and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So if you guys haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can see my next video. So I'm currently a respiratory therapist. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the differences between respiratory and nursing, why I chose respiratory, why I didn't choose nursing, um, do I regret it at all, and uh, pros and cons of each. So I'm going to start off with the difficulties in respiratory versus nursing. So one of the main differences is it's a little harder to move up in respiratory. So a respiratory therapist could be working 10 years and then they finally get a lead position compared to a nurse who worked. 10 years and they can already be a nurse practitioner or maybe even go to North Nest as a school and become one of those. Uh, they can become a manager much easier as well as a lead nurse. So there are obviously a whole lot more nurses compared to respiratory therapists. That ratio is crazy, I don't know it off the top of my head, but there are much more nurses, let's just put it that way. So it's easier to move up in the nurse world. Another big difference is that nurses make more money than respiratory therapists. So. We could have the same education, both have a bachelor's degree, however, nurses make a little bit more money. Another difference is nurses get paid a little bit more if they have more education. When most respiratory departments, if you have your bachelor's or your associates, you're going to get paid about the same, you may get paid a little bit more. The same goes with credentialing. So as a respiratory therapist, you can get different credentials in um, different things, such as neonatal pediatric specialist, you can be adult critical care specialist. However, some uh, hospitals won't pay you anything for getting these. I know other hospitals have a point system, so if you have a bachelor's degree, you get five points. You get another credential, that's another five points. And once you get to 15 points, you may get a five or ten dollar raise on top of what you're already making. So nurses can specialize a little bit more. So uh, if they want to work in the ER, they can work in the ER. If they want to go to the ICU, they can go there. Um, there are plenty of different ICUs. They can go in the NICU, they can go in the neuro ICU, they can go in the regular ICU, maybe a surgical ICU or trauma ICU. They can pretty much go anywhere and they specialize a little bit more in that certain part of the body when they're in that specific ICU. Um, they can also go in operating rooms or uh, they can just do the floors. As I talked about a nurse working in different ICUs or different areas, that nurse may not be as educated in that specific area, so they may have to do a little bit more research and understand what exactly is going on. For example, if a nurse worked down the ER, their whole goal is basically stabilize the patient, send them upstairs, or send them home. But if they transition to the ICU, that's a completely different world. They're going to have to learn the medications. Well, they should know the medications, but they may need to know the dosages and stuff a little bit better. And uh, what we do in specific uh, scenarios. So that's a whole different ball game. So if nurses want to switch around or whatever, they're going to have to learn a little bit more. Another thing that's a little bit more difficult for nurses is that if they're working in the ER, they can't just switch to the ICU or switch to the floors because... That's just not what they're hired for unless they're hired for a float and then in that case they can switch. However, they just do what they're told. They have no say in what they're going to get. Compared to respiratory therapists, we work all over the hospital. So in one day I could be in the ER next to the ICU and next I could be in PEDS or NICU even. That's one thing I love about respiratory is I feel like I have a broad uh, knowledge over everyone in every area. I can go ahead and do this easily without changing my employer or af or having to go and contact another manager to see if I can actually switch my positions. My lead therapist will go ahead and assign me to that assignment or that area for the day and that's my day. As I talked about, the nursing world is a lot bigger. There's a whole lot more opportunities to move. Nurses can work in a lot more different areas. So. Uh, nursing homes, um, you can work in doctor offices, you can work in the hospital, and it's, there's just so much more. Compared to a respiratory therapist, some nursing homes may only require one respiratory therapist, however they may need 20 or 30 nurses. Another thing that's a little easier for nurses to do, in my opinion, is to go ahead and find a day job. Once again, that has to do with that ratio, there's just so much more nurses, so positions pop open a lot more. Compared to respiratory therapy, which is a smaller world, you have to go ahead and wait until someone moves, and sometimes that can take a whole lot longer. So now I'm going to talk a little bit why respiratory therapy is better in my opinion. 
So this is strictly my opinion. Um, I believe that nurses work a little harder. So I'm waiting for the respiratory therapist to get a little defensive at this point. <laughs> Go ahead and unlike, unsubscribe, do whatever. At the end of the day, who says this more? I'm glad I'm not a nurse or I'm glad I'm not a respiratory therapist. Because you see some nurses and you're like, man, that job sucks. I'm glad I'm not doing that right now. Um, sometimes nurses will also have one patient that is just a total train wreck. And they'll have to deal with that patient the whole time. And if nursing staff is short, they may have to deal with two of those patients and they may not get a lunch at all. So I know there have been days where I've been super busy running around like a chicken with their head cut off and I haven't got a lunch. However, this happens a whole lot more to nurses than it does respiratory therapists. In my opinion, in my experience, this has been the case. As respiratory therapists, we also have a famous saying, it's peep, not poop. <laughs> so what I mean by this is, um, we're working with people. What do people do every day? They pee and they poop. So as a nurse, you're gonna to have to deal with that every single day. Um, as a respiratory therapist, we deal with sputum and all that crap that comes out of the lungs, but I don't have to deal with that every day. Sometimes when I'm in the ER, I'm dealing with other things. Sometimes I'm just on the floors giving breathing treatments and I don't have to deal with mucus or anything. Plus a lot of the, uh, the suction canisters are uh, in line so there's no way that's gonna get on me however with poop all you got between poop in your hand is a little glove and I ain't wiping no butts with just a glove but that's me <laughs> one advantage of being a respiratory therapist you not deal with poop another thing that nurses have to deal with is patients so sometimes patients can be very mean they can be buttheads uh, but with a nurse you're stuck with that patient all day you have to be nice to that patient all day. Now, I'm not saying that I'm rude as a respiratory therapist, but if I walk into the room and you start calling me curse names, or whatever, telling me, get the F out, you don't want to see me, why am I even here? That's going to be a refusal. I mean, I try and talk my patients into it a little bit, but sometimes they're straight mean. They say some pretty rude stuff, and I just, and I just want to get out of there as fast as I can. Now, uh, a nurse, you're stuck with this patient. You have to do everything you can to help them. And that's what we're there to do. Even though they're going to be mean to you and call you names all the time, you're bringing them their food, their medicine, you're doing whatever, and they're still going to yell at you. Those are also the patients that are constantly hitting the call bell because they want something. So guess who has to answer the call bell? The nurse or the respiratory therapist? So for an RT going to school, it's only an associate's degree. So you finish out your... Uh, prereqs or whatever and then, my pro and then my program was only about a year and a half long uh, not even quite that long so I went to school for about two and a half years and I'm making great money just right out of school and all I need to do is get my associate's degree now uh, there's been talk about the respiratory therapists having to go back and get their bachelors but I don't see that happening in the near future uh, most hospitals will want nurses to get their bachelor's degree right away some nurses have to even go back and get their master's degree right away. But as a respiratory therapist, all you need is an associate's degree. So if you don't want to go to school for very long or you're looking for a quick career change, respiratory is perfect for you. I also feel like nurses get burnt out a whole lot easier than respiratory therapists do. So for example, there are some days when I'm down in the ER, I have a video talking about my day in the ER, and sometimes I don't get a lunch. I'm working like crazy. But as a nurse, you're down there every single day down the ER. And sometimes your whole week can be like that. And as a respiratory therapist, like I said, I can be in the ER one day and then on the floor it's the next day where it's not as busy and I can actually get a break and a lunch. So therefore, if you're a nurse working in a crazy environment, you're going to get burnt out pretty quick. So I talked about different areas where a nurse could improve and basically move up in the ladder. So how can a respiratory therapist move up in the ladder? So basically, um, you can go ahead and become a lead, you can become a manager, and there's also a new thing out there called the APRT, which is the Advanced Practice Respiratory Therapist. I have a video on that talking about all that. So it's basically when a respiratory therapist goes to school to become an advanced practitioner, such as a nurse practitioner or a physician assistant. So, as an RT, if you go to PA school or physician assistant school, that looks fantastic. And then uh, you can also go to 
perfusionist school or you can become a uh, anesthesia assistant which they make bank as well. This is equivalent to a uh, CRNA or a nurse anesthetist. However, not every state recognizes this career path yet, so uh, I would definitely look into that before you go for that. So the final question is, do I actually love respiratory? Am I glad I picked respiratory therapy? Yes, I'm glad I'm a, I am glad I am a respiratory therapist and not a nurse. Um, for many of these reasons that I shared, um, I also talked about me potentially going into physician assistant school and many of my other videos. So. There's different things you can do as a respiratory therapist. You're not always stuck as an RT unless you want to be stuck as an RT. Um, you create your own career path. You choose what's best for you. So you're in control here. So I have another video talking about what I would do if I didn't become a respiratory therapist. And I did say I'd become a nurse. I also talked about a few other things that I would be doing if I didn't join the medical field. So if you guys are interested in that video at all, you can check that out. But overall, I hope this video went and basically summarized everything for you. Um, just basically looked at some difference between respiratory and nursing. If you guys have any questions at all, just leave in the comments and I'll get back to you. See you in the next one.